Terence Crawford was recently on Joe Rogan and he asked um, Joe Rogan a very interesting question about the business side of UFC and MMA. And Joe Rogan, I didn't know Joe Rogan was this much of a politician. His ability to completely dodge the question and just start talking about another thing is masterful. He had no he had no intention of answering that question because if he tries to answer the question you have to address how his good friend Dana White fucks over most of the fighters in the UFC and doesn't pay them a decent amount of money so that they can make you know UFC somewhat worthwhile for themselves a lot of them have to fucking fight six times a year to make a decent amount of living I think some of them I think most people on the UFC I think I checked I saw somewhere someone said that they're on like 30 grand a year or something which is absolutely insane right and I'm going to read actually an article article next from bloody elbow where they talk about i'm um, sure normally is never going to be able to make conor mcgregor money anymore because ever since conor mcgregor the ufc completely changed their contracts and put things into place that basically limits people from actually balling out in the ufc you can only get paid what they want to pay you and that's it but rogan is the consummate company man i know a lot of people in the ufc mma space look at dc daniel cormier and think oh he's the fucking top tier company man but i think rogan might be up there mate look at rogan's ability to completely dodge this question absolutely masterful let me ask you a question okay so what you think on uh about the business uh side of mma and in boxing in what way and like you know <laughs> The way in of what way? You the know what way? Getting, you know, not getting what they deserve. In MMA? And boxing. Well, Both. you know, it's tricky, right? <laughs> like this whole thing with you and Spence, like trying to negotiate a, a proper contract. You know, there's a lot of vultures. <laughs> Deflection? A lot of weasels. Vague? The one good thing about the UFC is that there's one organization that controls it. Yes. The one bad thing about the UFC is that there's one organization that controls it. Decent comment, right? And. You, th you think you'd want to expound a bit. H hear him expound. So you got good and bad. So, like, if I was a manager of a fighter, I would want fighters, like, like your career, where you're tested and you're, you're, you're facing ever-increasing <laughs> challenges, but it's calculated. <laughs> What's it's calculated, the and you're, you get lessons from each fight, and then you build up to a point where you're ready to challenge for, for a title. Like, John Jones fought for the title when he was 22. I mean, it was a last-minute fight. Imagine he asks a specific question about the, you know, about the business side of the UFC and boxing, and then he talks about John Jones' title fight. <laughs> John Jones comes out with a flying knee. That's the response to the question, basically. Absolute legend. Um, Rashad Evans got hurt, and John Jones went in to fight Shogun. John was just so fucking talented, <laughs> so above everybody else, that he dominated that fight and walked away the world champion, destroyed Shogun. He opened up the fight with a flying knee. Mm. 22 years old, okay. first title fight, <laughs> opens up with a flying knee. Who the fuck does that? Nobody mm. does that. Everybody would be nervous. Everybody, be, John's just so loose and creative in there. But in <laughs> MMA, a lot of times fighters get fights they're really not ready for. Right. And they but have I'm not to talking the about fight. the aspect of... Big up Crossford for trying to bring it back around and actually get Joe to fucking answer the question. One more time. <laughs> I'm talking about the business side of it. Well, the business side, it, it be, speaks to that as well because for a fighter to get to a point where they're undefeated and they have a big name, then they start getting the big money. Mm -hmm. And then they're the headline of the card. And, you know, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of good in that. There's a lot of good in preparing a fighter <laughs> properly. Like you see a lot of fighters when they fight for a title, they might have like 16 and 1, 16 and 0. Oh, like people like undefeated records. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that a UFC fighter gets all the way to a title fight without some <laughs> What? And pick up crash. Is this Joe Rogan or Joe Biden? Yeah, exactly, mate. Honestly, absolutely incredible. He just completely dodged everything about the fucking question. Big up uh, crash. Appreciate you for the super chat, brother. The funny thing about this is that I think someone else mentioned that Joe and Dana are BFFs. Cool. 
if that's the case, just start off and say, hey, you know, I'm not too sure if you're aware, me and Dana go way back. He's the reason why I'm in the UFC. When he leaves the UFC, I'm going to leave also. I'm only there for him. So I can't really answer that question, honestly, to be honest. I can't really be, um, I can't really be unbiased in this sort of question. So I'd just rather not talk about that sort of stuff. Just be honest and say that out front. Don't fucking do the whole dancing thing because it's awful. But then another part of me thinks, the reason why this is kind of disappointing is that Rogan is been known or has been known as somebody who pays very well. Allegedly, through the grapevine and other comedians, you hear about him. If he takes you on the road, if you open for him, whatever it may be, he pays comedians incredibly well. The rumor is around town nowadays with a comedy mothership, he also pays people incredibly well too if they perform um, at his comedy club and they do a weekend there. Some people are saying he some he maybe even overpays some people um, based on their lack of their profile, whatnot. He just kind of is a fan of comedy and wants to help people out, and he's obviously got the money to be able to afford it. But in actuality rogan's one of those type of people where he sees the wrong in the industry in terms of you know how they treat comedians the fact that you know how the grooms are set up and how the time they get on stage all this stuff all this logistical stuff and he basically tries to make it right with his own comedy club and the stuff that he does over there so you'd think if that's the case imagine if somebody like dana white existed in the comedy scene and they tried to fleece the comedians the way Dana White fleeces and scams and fucking you know cheats the fucking fighters in the UFC Rogan would never stand for it so it's really interesting to see Rogan turn a blind eye or bury his head in the sand when it comes to Dana and how he treats the UFC fighters because he would never stand for the same treatment if it affected comedians he wouldn't have it in the slightest the other thing that's really disappointing when it comes to this is that I think the sensible approach to dealing with the whole pay issue with UFC fighters, really, in my opinion, the sensible approach would be to just have things in place where, you know, the thing that happened to Wonderboy is a is another example where the fight got the fight um got cancelled because the fighter that Wonderboy was gonna fight um missed weight. So I think you're within your right if you're a fighter in the UFC to say, hey, I've done what I should be doing in order to make weight for the fight. That person didn't. If I don't want to fight because I'm a, you know, I'm conscious of my health and shit, or it's not gonna it's gonna give that person an advantage when they come into the ring, I've got every fucking reason to do so. And it does be the case, have a stipulation in the contract that you get maybe 50% of your purse or 60 or 70, a percentage of somewhere along the lines. Wonder Boy got nothing. That's fucking crazy. Another thing to fix it, have everybody have a standard base pay, a standard base pay per year. As in when you're a, you know, when you're on a card on the UFC, you get a salary for the year, like a base pay of like, let's say 50 grand for each fighter, or maybe a fighter that's appeared on maybe a main card or a fight night card, whatever you want to do it, however you want to do it. Maybe a, a, car, a fighter that appears maybe on the main cards, not the prelims, have a way you figure it out. Just figure out a way to do a thing where most fighters are on a base salary of 50 grand. Then they can make more on top of it if they have more fights so that they're not having to fight six times in a year just to make the 50 or something. That's fucking crazy. And I also have always hated, I'm not going to lie, I've always hated how the fighters twerk for the bonus, for the knockout bonus. The fact that they're all fucking begging for it on a microphone. I think that's horrible and cringe. And I think one way to maybe alleviate that and the desperation for it is to maybe give them the ability to fucking can earn some money from sponsors on their shorts you don't need to have it like maybe other other leagues out there where it's a bit tacky and they have those fake tattoos on their body and shit okay don't do that but at least let them make money from just having you know being able to fucking take money or you know from having certain sponsors on their fucking shorts or maybe in certain areas they, they need to have the sponsors everywhere maybe you have a particular section of the short where they're allowed to have maybe five sponsors and then you fucking give them that what's wrong with that if even if you don't want to give them a base pay of 50 grand just say every fighter is allowed to have a square that measures i don't know 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters on their fucking shorts and they can put whatever sponsor they want on there that's a fucking fair way to go about things but for some reason dana refuses to do it it's a very odd thing i don't really know why i think the ufc can definitely afford giving most fighters a 50 grand fucking salary they can definitely afford to give them uh the ability to make some extra cash with sponsors on their shorts and all this malarkey but they refuse to do it i don't even think they should go as far as healthcare maybe they don't do the whole healthcare thing maybe they can sort that out on their own but giving these guys a standard base salary is cool because some of these fighters are making like 30 grand i bet you most likely and i think most of you guys would agree most likely most commentators at the ufc make more money than probably 60 percent of the fighters in the ufc roster can you believe that 
obviously we know Rogan does because he's fucking blockbuster. You would get that. But I would imagine most commentators, most people who work in the media, you know, in terms of doing the fucking media shows around the UFC and shit, I bet you those guys get paid more than actual fighters on the UFC roster. Imagine salaried employees of the UFC get paid more than the fighters who are putting their fucking, you know, lives on the line, essentially. It's fucking crazy, man. I don't know how he gets away with it. And it's fucking crazy to see someone like Rogan, who would never stand for it in comedy, turn a blind eye to it. It's absolutely insane. Again, I don't know much about it. I'm a bit of a casual when it comes to the UFC. But the business side of it just fucking tears me up. And then this article from the Bloody Elbow um, is a good little... um, Adage to what I was talking about here. Um, actually, before I read the article, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat here. Uh, you guys are saying, AZ got that Gino Bisconti in hot water drip. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yo, yo, big up everybody. Big up TV Hulk, long time no see, brother. Um, Sayagu says Dana underpays fighters to keep them hungry. Yeah, I hate that. I think you can still pay fighters a 50k salary, which is not much, you know, 50k for the year when you have to pay for training camps and nutritionists and flights to go to fucking places, whatever. It's not going to go far, 50 grand, don't get me wrong. But I think a base salary of 50,000 would still allow fighters to be hungry enough to add, to make more money on top of it. But it would also make sure that fighters don't have to fucking, you know, fighters, some fighters are making 10 and 10 for the entire year, overdrawn, no money in their fucking account, having to borrow money or do GoFundMe's. It's fucking embarrassing, bro. The professional athletes. Fuck that shit. Um, Dana pays who he wants. Exactly. TV Huck. Um, Game Bree says they. I think Dana has sorted out Wonder Boy when he does. No, they think Dana has sorted out Wonder Boy when he does. Dana never sought anyone out. His contractor fires show up. No, I don't like. Also, Game Breed, I know you're right here, most likely, but I don't like that. I don't like this kind of like because then this is it a lot i sort people out i don't like this kind of you have to go to him like the godfather and beg for your fucking for, for your fucking um food and shit i don't fucking love that shit i think that's horrible i think everybody should be able to make a certain amount there should be no begging no kissing the ring no fucking getting the mic and begging for the fucking ko bonus like brandon says i think that's fucking ridiculous i don't love all that shit like he acts like oh yeah if you come to me and you got an issue i'll sort you out it's like come on bro like I, I don't even mention his gambling because I don't think that's anyone's business. Dana makes some money. He can do what he wants with his money. But surely, man, like you should have to know optics how bad that looks. You're sometimes going to fucking Vegas and spending more on fucking blackjack than some fighters make in a year. And then you're also not willing to pay them just a base salary. It's fucking crazy how out of order that shit is. I'm legitimately surprised that if you, if you decide not to fight because somebody else missed weight, you don't get paid. That to me blew my mind. That to me blew my mind because what's the point of having weight classes then? That means in the UFC, that means if you don't fight basically under any condition, you're just not going to get paid. It's absolutely insane. 